Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography. Today we are talking about backups and workflow. It's just so easy, so, so easy for your workflow and your backup solution to become messy and disorganized. And I have fallen foul of that recently just through being very busy. It's not really what I was concentrating on. And I became vulnerable because I didn't have copies or backups of the work I was doing. And for, my, for me and my business, that could be terrible. And I'm sure even just losing photos of your family and things like that is pretty disastrous for many of us. So I'm gonna talk through my backup solution and my workflow and just to give you a flavor of how I do it and see if you can take away some tips and tricks and ideas of how you might formulate your backup solution. Before we get into that though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store and make your next move, with Squarespace. So it's very easy with backup just to become disorganized. You've got dusty drives like this all over the place and you don't really know what's stored on where, when it was stored. For the last year or so, this is what I've been storing my stuff on and I need a better solution and follow the theory that I've had for a while about how you should back up your work. So the first theory of good backup solution is to have two copies. Two copies of the work you are creating so you are not vulnerable to losing that. Cards fail, hard drives fail, computers fail, everything like that. So you don't want to lose it just because of a technical failure. So from the start, I'm out in the field and I'm shooting my work. I'm taking pictures, I'm filming video, I'm creating audio as well. And as soon as I possibly can, I want to create two backups of that work. In cameras like the 5D Mark IV, you have backup in the camera itself, but with things like this, drone or the slightly cheaper and lighter Canon 800D. These only have one SD card. So after I've caught that footage on one of those devices, I'm always nervous until I get home or where I'm staying to dump that data onto my computer. Generally, I will put it onto my laptop. Some of the laptops these days have quite small hard drives in them. So something like this, uh, what is it, a 500 gigabyte SSD drive is very handy to carry around. It's light, it's small, but still packs a decent punch and it's actually quite fast as well. So I will dump the data onto them and I then can relax a little bit because then I've got two copies. I've got one in here or on my laptop and then the second one is still on the memory card. So I'm a little bit less vulnerable, but that will let me then move on to the next step. So depending where I am and how I'm doing things, I will then generally edit the footage because I'm a little bit more comfortable and I can start to work with it to see what's worth keeping, what isn't. Sometimes I can edit straight off these. Sometimes I like to edit as much as I can off my laptop hard drive just because it's faster. And that, that then is my final work, whether it's a video or a picture, and I can then upload it as well to wherever I'm sharing it, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, or to the client. And then I know there is also another copy out there. It's at this point that I've become a little bit complacent recently because you then need to archive that footage into a external hard drive or a server of some description. That's That means that you've then got that footage stored at, for long term when you may need to reference it in the future. Until recently, I've been using this five terabyte hard drive here and it's not bad for sort of general storage but when you want to re-edit your footage straight off that drive it is quite slow because it's just one single drive so recently i have upgraded to this this is the drobo 5d3 i think it's the thunderbolt 3 version of the drobo and it works in raid 5 which means that you put several discs in there and it writes the data to each disc at the same time meaning that it can be faster the more drives you've got in there the, the faster it will be as well i've got three in there at the moment and i can upgrade them as i need the storage space but that's a really nice solution with a thunderbolt 3 it means i can edit footage and pictures off there really quickly because it's that thunderbolt 3 it's got that speed and it's even good enough to edit 4k footage straight off that so one of the reasons I needed to buy the Drobo and it was painful paying for it because it is expensive, but the more and more and more that you create, the more you need to store. And it's just a painful necessity of being a creator, but you don't want to lose that data and I don't want to delete it either. So having this Drobo system has solved my problem despite the pretty scary expense of it. The other good thing about the Drobo is that if one hard drive fails, you can just pull it out, stick another one back in, and your data is safe, providing that redundancy. 
However, whether you are using a Drobo or the separate hard drive, you need to then back up that hard drive because you just don't know when that device on its own will fail. So although the Drobo has redundancy in there, if the Drobo itself fails, you still lose all your data. So you need to back up what's on the Drobo or the hard drive. I'm using this Seagate drive at the moment to back up onto the one single drive. And then I've got other stuff stored on separate hard drives. So I've got an archive of my work over the years and then everything is also sat on the Drobo. I'm backing up the computer to the eight terabyte hard drive as well using something like Time Machine. If you're on a PC, you can use something like Acronis, but it is a necessary step to back up your external drive or your main storage drive, whether that's internal or external, it doesn't really matter. So then we're on to the third and final stage, which is to somehow get off-site backup. There's a few ways of doing this, but you need to safeguard against fire or theft. I'm currently using a service called Backblaze, which is a very simple setup and forget, and it just backs it all up to the cloud. There are other options like Amazon Prime, which will store all your photos. Uh, you've got Dropbox and Google and Apple, all those cloud services that are now available. But as your storage needs increase, so does the cost. But Backblaze is good though, because it's one price for unlimited data, and then you can just restore everything later on if the worst was to happen. Now, once you've done that, you've got a pretty solid backup solution and you should be good in most circumstances. There is, however, another option and that is to very simply print them. There is a theory flying around that human history is in the most danger it's ever been in because everything is now digital. And if we were to suddenly lose the digital world, there wouldn't be any record of the last 20 odd years because of human history generally because it's all on computers. So printing it safeguards against that, whatever that may be. But apart from anything, it's just really quite fantastic to print your photos out and you should be doing that anyway. I created this diagram a little while ago that just sort of sets out and lays out everything I've been talking about and shows you all the steps you want to take to get a solid backup solution. Anyway, please do share this video with someone that needs to hear it. I do not want to hear any horror stories of people losing their footage or their pictures or anything like that. So back up, back up, back up, share the video to help people out. Right, before we go, I just wanted to give you a little update about what I've been up to. I haven't been out shooting a vlog for a while. I did the review of the Fuji camera last week, which you might enjoy. Check that out here. However, I, when I was out in Scotland doing the Glencoe vlog, I felt that was a pretty decent video. It was some epic scenery. I got some pretty good pictures and I just didn't feel like I could follow that up. So I followed it up with a few more practical things and that's just kind of how my creativity works. So moving forward, I'm gonna be ramping things up very much so in April. I'm stepping away from a few other things that I've been doing as the channel starts to grow and I wanna put more time into it to create more videos. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna work it at the moment, but there's definitely gonna be more than one video a week. Uh, and so if you have any ideas of videos you wanna see, things you want to see me doing, places you want me to go to, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you would like to see. I want to create content that you want to see. There'll still be vlogs, there'll still be reviews and tutorials and things, but I'm looking at doing a few other things. One of which is I want to start telling the story or your story. So with that in mind, I've done it a couple of times before, but I want to start collaborating with you. If you have a good story, an interesting story, or an exciting story that you want to share and you want me to share, I'd love you to come onto the channel. We can go out together, make some pictures together, have a good time, and you can come on the channel and promote whatever you want to promote. So if you're interested in that, please head over to the website at firstmanphotography.com. Send me an email, give me a little bit of background about yourself, and I will have you on the channel as soon as we can go through the rigmarole of getting that organized. But I want to expand the channel a little bit into a few other things, different genres of photography a little bit more often as well. So there's lots of good changes coming from April onwards. I've got a busy March because I'm moving house. If you follow me on Instagram as well, you will see the move of the studio because this is in my house and I'm moving First Man Photography HQ to a new house and a new location in the next couple of weeks. So follow me on Instagram and I'll share some of those stories. Anyway, before we go, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you haven't heard of Squarespace before, 
They are a website designer. It's very simple to use, easy for you to use to set up your very own website. It's really good. I use it from all my websites. So if you go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today, and if you go to squarespace.com slash firstman, you can get 10% off your first purchase. It really is worth checking out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm hoping to get out to film a vlog this week for the next video, so I'll see you then. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography in the studio. 